Hello everyone, it's me Pavlo and today we'll be talking about FIO BTR13. As you can easily guess by name, it's the updated version of their BTR3 receiver. FIO are pretty consistent with updating of their wireless receivers. I already reviewed BTR15 some time ago and the BTR17 uh, announced uh, to be released in November, if I understood correctly, but in between we getting the most affordable offer, BTR13. Its price, recommended price $60, but of course it depends on taxes and other stuff like that in your local countries. Uh, it's built with dual uh, Cyrus Logic 43131 chips and uh, Qualcomm chip uh, is responsible for the rest of things. And uh, probably other specs I will tell you during this review where it will be appropriate. So, pretty interesting uh, affordable device, let's have a closer look. As you can see, package is simple, pretty minimalistic, with minimum polygraphy, just high-res audio logos. And from, of all information, we have just names of different codecs, their logos and copyrights. And inside there is a black cardboard with BTR13 itself, and underneath we have some accessories. But most likely it will be a pretty minimalistic set, so yeah, you get lanyard and USB Type-C to USB Type-C short cable. Here is BTR13 itself. As you can see, it's pretty compact and this time it has built-in uh, short clip. Not sure why Fio decided to go this way, but anyway, of course, uh, short clip is a nice addition to the device, but I'd like to see case like it was uh, for the previous models. It's compact uh, compared it can be compared with some portable digital tonal converters, but here we're getting also a Bluetooth. On the bottom you can see USB Type-C, it can be used for charging and also it can work as USB digital tonal converter and on top regular and balanced outputs. So here is microphone and on-off button. So let's pull, push and hold it and it will turn on and will be in the pairing mode. Then additional button, volume control and three-positional toggle that changes mode. So if we toggle it on top, it will go to the PC mode, meaning it will work as digital tonal converter without uh, draining internal battery. In Bluetooth it works as a receiver and can be charged and in the bottom position it's in the phone mode, also works as digital tonal converter, but using only internal battery. As you can see on the front we have screen and the glass part. Glass part is pretty actively gathering fingerprints, but it's okay for pocketable device. And also this button when you press and hold it, you can get to the menu. So charger, then two levels of gain, then you can select equalizer, but more about equalizer we'll talk uh, in the next part. Then car mode, you can connect it to, to your uh, car charger and when you start the engine device will start up and when you shut down engine device will shut down. Then you can select screen brightness. Let's turn the maximum level to see. Actually pretty nice screen with good viewing angles. Then you can select display off timer. 20 seconds seems to be reasonable language. Reset and firmware version you can see here. As you can see device is small, convenient, pretty easy to use. But of course you can also control it remotely. So let's talk about that. Here is our good friend FIO control. So device uh, itself, name, charge level and uh, current codec. You can customize name, upgrade firmware, clear pairing, restore default settings and shut device down. Also you can select idle power off, select what Bluetooth codecs you want to use and then you can select uh, buttons operation mode, menu operation and wake screen. Actually, power button only is pretty convenient, so you can change volume without uh, turning screen on. Then, 
equalizer. Fio is actively working on improving equalizer. You can save it locally, you can save it on the device, you can uh, turn it on and off. In the advanced settings you're getting parametric equalizer. You can set three custom presets and uh, select them from the device. So everything you need to tweak the sound of your device. Then in the audio settings you can so, uh, limit volume if you need, select device volume, volume of tones and on co of call and channel balance. And also you can get uh, manual in English. And also few currently actively developing web version of the control app uh, for their devices to control the equalizer. I didn't test it yet, uh, but uh, most likely it, it's working and it's a really good thing because now you can control your device just from the browser. And I've seen that for the keyboards and now for the few devices. Nice in, interesting feature, we'll try it and probably we'll make a short video about that in the future. So let's see how these modes are working. Now it's uh, in the PC mode and it's charging battery, you can see. And when battery will be fully charged, it will uh, disconnect it and will work from the power of the source. And as you can see, power consumption is pretty high now. And if we flip the switch down, you can see that it goes to the own built-in battery and consumption, consumption drastically drops. Short test of built-in microphone. I'm holding BTR13 uh, approximately in 15 centimeters uh, from my face and recording this part of the video using built-in microphone. I won't apply here any gain correction or equalization, so it, this uh, fragment will give you an idea uh, how its microphone sound. So in terms of sound, it's a nice device with a slightly softened treble that uh, shifts overall balance towards the warmer side of things, but I can't call it like really colored or super warm because it's still close to balanced signature, but uh, it's just not as natural as its uh, uh, older brothers like BTR15 or BTR7, for example. Uh, I'm not sure if was it intentional uh, uh, tuning or not, uh, but it's more uh, a bit more relaxed compared to more expensive devices and uh, at the same time more enjoyable and uh, plays better with inferior uh, tracks, uh, I mean in terms of quality and with not superb uh, headphones. So it's a bit like uh, hiding issues. And probably it's a good idea for the affordable universal all-in-one device. So bass goes almost to maximum possible depth for the Bluetooth and uh, it's not the most impactful, but when necessary it delivers nice kick as well as a good control. Of course, if you won't plug some hard-to-drive headphones, Texture rendering and resolution is like normal, not great, but normal. And uh, also it delivers a pretty satisfactory amount of weight uh, and at the same time not uh, overweighting things. Uh, natural instrument sounds good, but of course lacking a bit of uh, small nuances and details. So our first example, it's Billy Jean by Michael Jackson. Super enjoyable track, sounds really good with this uh, receiver. Nice uh, drum line, signature bass line, sounds lively and emotional and enjoyable. Mids are balanced, resolution is good, uh, but definitely not maximum. Almost zero focus on the micro contrast, uh, but uh, small nuances and details are present. Imaginary stage is about average in width and slightly below average in depth, uh, but everything is separated uh, pretty decently. Not really critical for the quality of records and uh, pretty forgiving in this aspect. But at the same time with good records instrument sounds pretty lively as well as uh, vocals uh, both male and female. So for this price I'd say that it's a really good mids. I won't complain about. And example here is a not super complex but slightly complicated track. It's Storytime by Nightwish and Symphonic Orchestra and uh, 
guitars, vocals, a lot of things going on here. Uh, it's lacking a bit of in terms of stage to give you that sense of epic uh, size and uh, orchestra and stuff. But at the same time, everything is separated uh, pretty well and represented nicely. Not at 100% level, but on a pretty good level. Uh, and the treble. It's actually pretty pleasant, uh, but slightly softened. Not too much, but at the same time I can call it uh, like comfortable. Still, overtone saturation is pretty good with basic overtones. Extension is just as uh, far as uh, Bluetooth codex allows you. But of course we don't speaking about uh, some audiophilia clearing or stuff like that. So. If you need that, you need to consider more high-end Bluetooth receivers or a few of wired uh, Bluetooth, oh, sorry, not Bluetooth, USB dongles. They deliver that uh, on a higher level if you need that. But in many cases, actually, it's still more than enough to give you a nice amount of overtones and other stuff like that. So. Here is an example, Melissa Menago, Smoke Signs, and it's pretty audiophilic recording. It's even written on the album cover. And a lot of uh, overtones here, because instruments are really well recorded. And this uh, small device sounds surprisingly good for uh, its uh, size and price. So it's just a matter of expectations, so don't expect like BTR7 performance here. But uh, for this price, especially if you need Bluetooth, it totally justifies itself. And what is also pretty surprising here, it, in the Bluetooth mode, it has almost the same quality as in wired mode. When connected by USB, of course, you're getting better extension on both ends, and also you're getting slightly more detailization on the mids. But difference is not night and day, and that's probably because Bluetooth quality improved and here used the Qualcomm chip that is responsible both for USB and Bluetooth, and you're getting that all. And of course, don't forget that you can adjust sound via equalizer to get uh, whatever you like. In terms of pairings, of course, it's mainly created for the in-ear monitors. You can drive full-size headphones with it, but like most sensitive ones. From the balanced out, it delivers up to 220 milliwatts for 32 ohms and 100 milliwatts per channel from the single ended output. Uh, work time was about uh, 8 hours when I measured, but with LDAC codec, of course, it will be less. I measured it with my iPhone and AAC codec. So, with AAC, it's uh, usually I was getting uh, a bit more than 8 hours, so which is uh, pretty decent in my opinion. Speaking about the comparisons, it's a step forward compared to the previous BTR3. Here you're getting more natural mids, slightly more con control and better resolution, and overall it's a bit more balanced. BTR15 has a dedicated amplifier, so it has more control, delivers more punch and slightly more resolution. And BTR7, despite being pretty old, I've seen announcement of BTR17, Fio announced that it will be released in November, if I remember right. But even BTR7, of course, it's more detailed, more resolving and more focused on the micro contrast but it's uh, much higher in terms of price. So, in general, I'd say that it's a great device for, like, everyday carry. It's not for audiophilic listening or hearing small nuances, but it's a really great solution just to use during your daily commute, on the go, or something like that. You'll get tons of connectivity options, parametric equalizer to adjust to on virtually any headphones and earphones, and... Uh, Nice balanced sound, good connectivity options, low background noise, nice design, built-in clip, and actually tons and tons of other great things. Thank you for listening, thank you for your attention, and have a great day.